Can you game on the Surface Laptop 4? You're about to find out. The Surface Laptop 4 was announced this week, and I've got my dirty little mitts on one. And in front of me here, or whatever, right here, is the Surface Laptop 4. This is the R7 with 16 gigs of RAM and about 500 uh, gigs of storage. But the key thing here is the R7 CPU inside that has a plentiful 8 cores and 16 threads, which is just a beautiful thing to say about a laptop. So the question becomes, with that many cores and threads, can you game on this laptop. This is one of the things I love to do with Surface hardware. I've done it on the Surface Book 3. I've done it all the way down to like the Surface Go. And so Surface Laptop 4, gonna be no different. So I've run it through some benchmarks and I'm gonna throw these up here on lttstore.com, um, which you can see right here. And so you can make what you will out of this, but the high level view here is, hey, uh, the CPU performance is honestly actually pretty good. And so on a per core basis, you're gonna get some pretty good performance. And also the multi-core performance is significantly improved over the previous year. Now I will throw up the 3D Mark score here, which sort of tells you a different story. Obviously this is not designed to be a gaming laptop. Microsoft does not pitch it as a gaming laptop, but the question becomes, can you game on this device? Which is what we're gonna talk about here. So I've done a couple tests, a couple things to know here. I'm running two different games. I'm, I'm running Warzone, which I'm pretty, darn good at, at least I'd like to think so. On the Xbox Series X, uh, I played a lot, so playing on here, it's very comfortable. Um, I am also using an Xbox controller, and I'm also playing Fortnite, which I am terrible at. So uh, if you want to jump to what the conclusions are, you can you can find the chapters down below, but this is a pretty lengthy video of just some playback. Now there's some things to note here. I've basically played both games two different ways. I played it with what the game was said was the recommended settings for my device, and then I took the settings and dropped them really low to see if it was even possible. So just keep that in mind. One minor note, which is a little frustrating, I used the game bar to record this, so there's gonna be a little overhead from that capacity and, and hurting the frames. I used the game bar and then that little widget, at least on Fortnite, to capture frames per second and CPU and everything else, and it didn't show up in the actual recordings. Now, in Warzone, you will see in the top left corner the F FPS counter because I did turn that on. But what I did effectively was I took the recommended settings and then I tried to drop the settings as low as feasibly possible to make it so that the, the GPU was not maxed out at 100%. Very clearly on this device, the GPU is the limiting factor, not the CPU. And, and it's by a pretty large stretch. Not all that surprising. Realistically, not all that surprising. But just keep that in mind as you're watching uh, this play through. Target practice while you can. We're deploying soon.
Enemy team is tracking your location. No doubt drop headed your way.
Battle Royale. You've got gas closing in fast. Get to the safe zone. Does anyone need this? They're just here. They have.
All right, so now that you've watched that or you just skipped here because of the YouTube chapters, there's a couple things to take away. Warzone on this device, it, you need it's not possible. I, yes, I was able to get some kills. Yes, I was able to bump the frames per second by about 10, but you could really see that it was struggling. It's very clear that on this laptop, the GPU is the limiting factor. The CPU wasn't really taxed at all, honestly. I mean, it, yes, it was utilized, but I didn't see when in the benchmarking or compared to benchmarking, it wasn't getting close to its max capacity. It was running pretty well. The fans did kick up, but that's because the GPU is struggling for air. I mean, it's grasping for, for at anything it can get its hands on to try to boost performance. Performance, it's not really possible. Fortnite, on the other hand, while the recommended settings were terrible, I mean, it looked like a, a PowerPoint deck trying to play it, when you really butcher things down and just drop them to just about their lowest setting, it is reasonably possible to play Fortnite on this device. Now, I, it's not something I would go out and like highly recommend. It's more of one of those things like, hey, it's technically possible, but it's not a great experience. This device has a really good CPU, at least compared to last generation. I wish it had a 5000 series, but the 4000 series with its eight cores and 16 threads, it's just so nice to say about a laptop, does hold its own. It does hold its own. And you can go back and look at those benchmarking to really get a better understanding of that flavor. But that being said, you can game on here. And I was using an Xbox controller to get it done. It's just not the optimal experience. If you want to game on a laptop, buy a gaming laptop. This would work if you... Like, all your other computers weren't working and you really just had to play Fortnite. You can't play Warzone. It would probably be okay, but yeah, they're not going to do that. What would be really awesome on here, really, really good, is Microsoft's upcoming cloud streaming service. As of the time of this recording, cloud gaming is not available. When you've got a 15-inch display on this thing, connecting it up to an Xbox controller and a, a pretty beefy CPU, I think this might be a really good device for that model. Now... I can't test it yet, but once that becomes available, I will give it a shot and see how that performs. But um, yeah, so the TLDR of this video is don't buy it for gaming, buy it for workloads. It's a good device. It's just not a gaming device. And that's okay. That's okay. I wasn't expecting it to hit, the, hit it out of the park. I mean, even this thing right here, the Surface Book 3 has a dedicated GPU, is a better gaming device, even though it's a little bit older, more than this Surface Laptop 4. And that's okay because that... Microsoft isn't telling you to buy this for gaming. So that being said, folks, keep it subscribed here because once cloud gaming does become available, I will give it a shot here. And the only BS on this channel is me.